guys. Um, I'm going to go over the unit test with you and tell you um, what the correct answers are and then also some thinking processes as I do. So this is a great way to complement the studying that you've been doing so far. Uh, for the unit test, um, I stole some of these questions. I made some of these questions. There are going to be similar questions on your actual Google Form quiz, which you will have on Thursday. So number one, ultraviolet light that reaches us from the, on the, excuse me, ultraviolet light that reaches us on the earth from the sun is visible to humans. UV light? No. We know that. Cross that out. So when you are practicing, absolutely not. Damages the skin? Well, yeah. I mean, like sunscreen and stuff. Okay. Is at a lower frequency than infrared? No, 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 no. Infrared is below red, the lowest. So that's not true. And then is at a higher frequency than x-rays? No, x-rays are actually higher than ultraviolet. Um, so ultraviolet is not higher. So my best choice here would be B. All right. Light is a blank wave. Is light transverse? Is light longitudinal? Is light compression? Light is not a wave. Light is a wave. Compression and longitudinal are synonyms for sound waves. Light is a transverse wave. Most of the energy from the sun that reaches the Earth's surface is in the form of A, infrared, visible, and ultraviolet. Okay, that sounds pretty familiar. Radio waves? Mm, the sun doesn't transmit radio waves. Or at least they don't reach the Earth. Oh, it's weird. Microwaves and x-rays? Mm. Ultraviolet, yes. Visible, yes. Microwaves, no. Radio waves, gamma rays, x-rays. The best choice here really is that visible light spectrum plus the ultra higher frequency violet and the infra lower frequency red. So A is the best choice. Um, four, number four. The light that is refracted is reflected off a surface. No, that's ridiculous. Reflected and reflected are different. Absorbed, no, 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 no. I mean, it, it, but that really doesn't describe what's happening here, but I'm going to leave that just in case. Transmitted around an object. No, my teacher threw that word in there to mess me up. Redirected to me means bent through another material. This sounds like the better choice than absorbed. And so I'm going to write redirected. If a 60 decibel sound increases to an intensity of 70, it went from 60 to 70, how much louder? Is it one? Is it one tenth? Is it two times louder? Is it three times louder? We know that the intensity is a logarithmic by 10 times scale. And if I'm going from 60 to 70, that's one step. One step is 10 times louder. A sound with a large amplitude will transmit a lot of energy. I've been looking at a ton of graphs of energy and amplitude. So I'm gonna like, mm -hmm. Frequency and amplitude, they don't really have a relationship. Uh, wavelength doesn't really have a relationship. Ooh, I know amplitude and intensity has a relationship and if it's large amplitude, it's not gonna be low intensity. So my best choice is amplitude affects energy and larger the amplitude, the larger the energy. Which statement is not true? Make sure you pay attention to those kind of things. Light travels with or without a medium. That is actually true. Sound must have a medium to travel through. That's actually true. Light speeds up in a more dense medium. No, I don't think that's true. Uh, in air, light travels faster than sound. That's actually true. So the one that's not true is light speeding up when the medium is denser. Denser. We know light is electromagnetic wave. Mag electromagnetic waves actually speed up in a less dense medium. And let's go to number eight here. 
a decibel measures the wavelength, no frequency, no speed, no intensity. So a lot of this is word association and synthesizing and organizing the information and that repetitive talk that you've been giving yourself. A denser medium will generally make a sound wave. Okay, so my teacher keeps asking me about the density of mediums, sound and light, and we know that she does because it's really one of those things that my brain has to sort out and repeat. So if sound is vibrating particles and a compression way, the closer together the particles, um, the faster the compressions can move. So a denser medium will generally make sound travel faster. If you know the answer for sure, just look for the choice. If you aren't sure, that's when you'll go through and scratch things out and sew those. Number 10, for example, um, I didn't really teach you albedo. Albedo is a phenomenon of reflection. The higher the albedo, the more is reflected. The albedo effect is something that we study in climate and uh, weather because we are dealing with the albedo uh, changing because the temperature of our earth is changing. So one of the things on our earth that helps reflect a lot of energy is snow. Lake water is actually dark. If you look at from space, if you look at the ocean or a lake, it looks dark. It is absorbing energy. Snow, on the other hand, is reflecting. So the albedo of snow is higher than the albedo of lake water. So I am actually not going to ask you a question on albedo. I just thought it was really cool. And apparently this is my test from last year. So apparently I did ask a question about albedo last year. Whatever, it's fine. For number 11, here we get to some short answer things. And so I really, you know, science is about interpreting information and you don't even have to know anything about uh, the content to be able to read these graphs. And so look at the transmission graph for the two high-tech films. So we have film A and film, or sorry, film one and film two. Film one shows as wavelength changes so this is this is actually changing our uh frequency here that the because in oh look what they've done to you and look what they've done to me i didn't even notice this until right now the wavelength that's the highest um is infrared and we're used to seeing it on this side of the graph so they're going by wavelength, but the shortest wavelength is actually UV. The next is violet. So they're doing Roy G. Biv backwards with infrared is the largest wavelength. It is the lowest frequency wave. So as I go from low to high, this is going to really change the way I interpret this information because one of the things we want to know, well, first is what percentage of the energy is transmitted depending on the wavelength. So film A and film, or sorry, film one and film two are different. Question A says, how much more orange light is transmitted through film one than film two? So orange is here. Film one, if I make my graph up and go all the way over and I look at my scale, about 10% is orange for film one. So one equals 10% that is transmitted. And now look at film two. Film two for orange is here. And that is about, oh no, sorry. What am I doing? Delete, delete, delete. Film one is, that's 10%, that's 20. Film one is 20%. And you see, like, it's so easy to make mistakes. It's so easy to look at things and your brain moves so quickly. Like, even for people like me, I've been studying this for longer than you've been alive and I'm still going to make mistakes. So part of it is working through it, talking to yourself and no, and I noticed I made a mistake when I was like, Hey, wait, 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 that's 10. So if that was 10, that can't be 10. And that's how I caught my mistake. 
so for number film one, I went from orange and I got about 20% transmission. For film two, I went to orange and I got about 10% transmission about, right? Like, I mean, I'm not going to take off and be perfect. And then when if on your quiz, it's a multiple choice you pick. So the question, though, is how much more light is transmitted through film one than film two? So it's literally 10% more. So one of the things is remember, as I'm grading your quizzes, I can't talk to you and have a conversation. So make sure you are clearly explaining. Uh, number B, part B is how much blue light is transmitted in film one? So the blue is here. And so blue, I make my line up as straight as I possibly can. And I come over and it's about 50%. So B is 50%. 50% of blue light is transmitted with film A. Now film C asks you, which film would be the best to prevent getting cataracts in your eyes? Cataracts in your eyes are caused by damage from ultraviolet light. So see this question expects you to know what can damage your eyes. And we know that ultraviolet light can damage your skin. It can also damage your eyes. This is why your parents bug you about wearing sunglasses. Um, that ultraviolet light that's exposed to you and hits your eyes can cause long-term damage. It might not happen until you're 60 years old, but it sucks when it happens. So when I look at these two films, I'm checking for that UV wavelength. And because I noticed that the x-axis has the UV first and not last, that's totally going to change my answer. So for this film, film two, film two does a great job blocking visible light, which would feel good on your sunglasses, but the UV light, it almost transmits a hundred percent. So if I have cheapy, cheapy sunglasses that look, you know, it blocks visible light. So I feel like I'm protecting my eyes the UV might not be getting blocked. You look, you need to look for UV ratings. And film one, if I look at the UV, look at here, it's actually um, only transmitting 20%. So the transmission is how much it's letting pass. It's transmitting 100% for film two. I do not want sunglasses that are tr transmitting 100% of the UV light. That sounds terrible. No, you might not feel bad, because when you are blocking light, you might not feel the transmission of UV. Um, the other thing is, could you have clearer lenses that also block UV? Hmm, that'd be cool to kind of do some research. So for part C, which film would best prevent getting cataracts? Film at one. And so those are questions you would ask when you go to buy sunglasses and take care of your eyeballs. I actually really like number two. Um, I'm sorry, number 12. And I really like number 12 because this reminds me of um, when we went to Kelp and they used the solar oven to bake our bread in that delicious garden with that delicious bread and the delicious stuff she put on the bread. And I was thinking about that solar oven. And did you remember what was in that solar oven? Reflective surface, wasn't it? So I'm going to cook an object. I need the heat to actually be directed towards the object, not away from the object. I don't wanna heat the solar oven, I want to heat the food. So when I look at this parabolic curved hot dog cooker, notice that concave surface, and remember concave surfaces reflect light in, uh, your, this student is trying to decide whether to put on the concave surface, black paper, aluminum foil, or clear plastic wrap. The curved surface is white. What materials should she choose and why? Now, I know that if I wanna cook the hot dog, I wanna get the heat and the UV and the energy in the, directed towards the hot dog. Which of those materials is going to direct the energy towards the hot dog? Which of those materials is going to reflect the energy towards the hot dog? It's the aluminum. 
And you know that's true because you did an experiment with black paper, aluminum foil, and just plain. And when you did that experiment, you noticed that aluminum foil reflected the energy the best. There's your answer. Uh, number 13, a light is directed towards a plane mirror. So I have my incident ray and it's coming in on a plane, a flat mirrored surface at 48 degrees. My angle of incidence is 48. What would my angle of reflection be? 48. It's a flat surface. The angle of incidence on a flat surface is equal to the angle of reflection. Uh, number 14, name the wave, uh, sorry, label the wave name parts of the wave with the appropriate terminology and give one example for each wave. Oh, this was confusing. This was a lot. Even me reading it now, I'm like, wait, what did I mean? So label the wave name. What kind of wave is this? Compression, longitudinal, sound. Uh, any of those three, they're synonyms. So I would write compression here. What is an example of a compression wave? Sound. This below wave, this is a transverse wave. What is an example of a transverse wave? You have a lot to choose from here. Um, we did the whole electromagnetic spectrum, radio waves, microwaves, visible light spectrum, infrared, UV, um, gamma rays, x-rays. And so I could put UV, I could put light, I could put radio, those would all be true. Now I go back and I need to label the parts. So the parts were labeled, and I noticed on the quiz that I had attached to your post um, the other day was, it, it had a data table at the bottom with numbers, and I think it's because I labeled numbers here when, before, when I printed it out before I gave the quiz. And so here we'll just label the parts, right? So the distance between compression to compression is the wavelength, and remember we had a symbol for wavelength, wavelength equals lambda, but you can write wavelength. It's just really hard to write with this. Wave, I need a touch screen. Length. Um, and then of course I, on this version it's colored. And so you can see that this section is colored in orange, this section in colored is orange. If I have compression to compression, that's the same as crest to crest. This is wavelength also. In between the compressions, and so this green color would be compression. In between the compressions are there's got to be a better way to do this that I just don't know about yet. Are rarefactions rare? If faction. The rarefactions are the spread out part, the compressions are the condensed part. How wide the compressions are here is amplitude, the distance between compression to compression wavelength, the in between spread out rarefaction. On a transverse wave, we have the top of the wave is the crest and top and bottom are relative to how you're looking at it, right? And then this is in a three-dimensional space. Uh, the bottom is the trough, depending on where your equilibrium is and where your um, point of view, your point of reference. When you get to high school physics, you'll talk a lot about point of reference. How are you looking at this? So the red is trough, the green is tress, crest, and then these two sections represent amplitude. Amplitude can be equilibrium to crest, equilibrium to trough. So there's my amp.
I really like the audiogram. I like looking at graphs and I like analyzing graphs. And so remember this audiogram had an X axis of frequency and a hearing loss. Um, no, sorry, a hearing level. So how much can I hear it at decibels? And so I think the reason why they did it upside down is to show that as this goes down, that, and that indicates hearing loss because as my frequency changes, it needs to be a certain loudness for me to be able to hear it. And remember, some people can't hear it at all at any loudness. And so where would that graph be? That would be really cool. So this is a uh, multiple choice actually. So the person has mild hearing loss in their right ear at low frequency. And so the right ear is the X and I see where the X is, this frequency is low and sure enough, it's at normal. So that is not correct. As the frequency increases, their hearing improves. So as I go across on frequency, I'm not seeing an improvement here. So that is incorrect. There is a moderate hearing loss at 4,000 hertz for both ears. So I go to 4,000 and I go down and sure enough, both ears have a moderate hearing loss. So that is correct, but I do wanna check the last one just in case. To hear 1,000 hertz here, the intensity must be 50. Here, that's not true. So I'm gonna stick with C. I moved through it fairly quickly and I'm good to go. Uh, number 16 is I'm um, comparing these three diagrams of waves and I've got it on my graph paper to see my equilibriums here. It, what's the difference between wave one and wave two? So if I look at my equilibrium that travels across here, I see that my grid shows me that my crests are about the same distance, but what really changes is how far my crests are from the equilibrium and so the difference is amplitude um and you could just write amplitude i'm going to give you most mostly multiple choice on your real quiz because grading has become my nemesis what's the difference between wave two and three so I can see if I draw my equilibrium in here, my amplitudes looks the same. What's changing is frequency. So wave three has a higher frequency than wave um, two. The other thing that changed is wavelength. So wave three has a lower wavelength, which corresponds to a higher frequency. Last question, number 17. Why do you see a bolt of lightning before you hear the sound of thunder? Because in air, which is not very dense, sound does travel. But because it's not very dense, sound travels slower. Light travels faster in air than sound. So when that lightning strikes, the it happens at the same time, the sound and the light. I see the lightning first because light travels faster than sound. Awesome. All right, there's your study guide. Good luck. Let me know if you have any questions. See you soon.